Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and it is Friday, June 5th and we are wrapping up our 10th week of these five minute histories. And I wanna say another thank you to uh, my daughter, 15 year old daughter Leah, uh, the film crew and my colleague Molly who puts all these together. Um, and I have to say we will add a new title uh, to Molly uh, to, as the chief of film production and uh, Ken Burns, you better look out, she's gaining on you fast. Um, before we jump into today, to today's topic of Silburn Mansion, um, I just wanted to share an email, and actually I think maybe I won't read the whole email, but an email from somebody who's watching these uh, after last, uh, yesterday's, Wednesday's uh, video on uh, the Mitchell family and Juanita Jackson Mitchell in particular. Um, and she commented that she's been involved with cleaning up a cemetery at Mount Auburn and came across Juanita Mitchell's grave that needed some help. And that got me to think, um, we have been involved in a couple of grave um, uh, restoration projects. Uh, my colleague Molly is on a, a group called the Laurel Cemetery Task Force, trying to provide some dignity to an African-American cemetery that's now under a surface parking lot in East Baltimore. And we've been trying to be helpful to a group um, who are cleaning up St. Vincent de Paul Cemetery, um, also in East Baltimore, a cemetery that had been neglected and then vandalized and then the gravestones removed and then a uh, golf cart path put over part of it. And that group's doing fantastic work. And the idea was that our mission at Baltimore Heritage is centered on trying to save historic places in the city. And if you all out there are involved in some preservation project and you think we can be helpful, uh, please, by all means, let us know. Give me a call, give Molly a call, send us an email, and would love to talk. All right, let's jump into Silburn Mansion. And I'm gonna start with probably the most outrageously macho quote ever uttered by a Maryland person. Here's the quote, and it's from Jesse Tyson, the uh, builder of Silburn Mansion. Um, he says, I have the fairest wife, the fastest horses, and the finest house in Maryland. Um, what, what, a, what a braggart. Um, uh, I'm not going to comment on the looks of his wife, and I have no idea how fast his horses are were, uh, but his house is pretty neat. He started it in 1863. Uh, he was a confirmed bachelor for a, a while uh, for as a summer home for himself and his mother, Hannah. Um, uh, but he doesn't get it done until 1888. And in 1888, he, he at age 61, marries the 19-year-old debutante, Edith Johns. And, uh, and then he completes his mansion. So maybe he's pretty, that's a pretty happy year for him. He gets married he gets his house. I don't know how his horses do. Um, but, uh, but he moves in there with Edith. Um, and Jesse is the head of the Baltimore Chrome Works Company. Um, and we're going to talk about that uh, in a second. Um, and he's actually the second head of it. He inherits it, he inherits it from his father, Isaac Tyson. Isaac, we talked about in a prior video uh, in relation to founding the McKim Free School. Um, but Isaac was born in Maryland. This is the dad, uh, was born in Maryland, born in Baltimore, um, and went off to France to study uh, geology at a young age. He comes back to his family farm on Bear Hills and, uh, and uh, supposedly on a trip to Bel Air, the Bel Air market in Hartford County, he looks down and sees an enormously heavy rock holding up a door on one of the stores. And maybe nobody else recognizes what, what it is, but he recognizes it, recognizes it as chromite. Um, and so he goes out hunting and he, um, lo and behold, he finds chromite on his family farm in Bear Hills. And he also makes the connection between a type of ecology called serpentine barren, uh, serpentine barren ecology and the presence of chromite. And so uh, he starts gobbling up, buying up all of the serpentine barren farms he can find in, in Baltimore County, up into Lancaster County, all the way up into Northern Pennsylvania. Um, and then he gets lucky because the other major source of chromium in the world world was in Siberia. And right as, as, uh, as Isaac has gobbled up all of the chromium sites in, excuse me, chromite sites in uh, the United States, the Siberia uh, chromite site dries up. And so now he is basically has the world's monopoly on chromium. And if you aren't familiar, say, well, what, what does chromium do? Well, chromium, uh, because of scientists in France, remember he studied in France, um, we're making breakthroughs that chromium was a pigment and it could bind really well to paint. Um, and so if you were a family in the early 1800s, um, you inherited your house from your parents and you had drab walls of various shades of dirty white, all of a sudden, if you were wealthy, um, you could have eye-popping colors in your paint. And if you want to know a great example of this, go down to James and Dolly Madison's house, Montpelier in Virginia, um, 
I think it can be only described as sort of walking off the strip in Miami with Miami pinks and greens. The living room is a wild shade of yellow. The, uh, there's a bedroom that is a wonderful shade of blue. Uh, we would not call these subdued colors. These are, these are really vibrant, um, which was a status symbol for the day, um, but maybe also a little bit due to the Madisons. Um, Dolly Madison, the famous host, apparently her favorite flavors of ice cream were tomato and, and then get this, oyster, even the hardcore oyster oyster lover Baltimoreans have to sort of wince at oyster ice cream. But anyway, so chromium is making its debut in paints um, and also in the tanning industry. And Isaac gets fabulously wealthy, um, founds the Baltimore Chrome Works Company. Jesse takes over. It locates uh, on the north branch of the Patapsco River in what we would call today's Inner Harbor. Um, you know the site for many years as Allied Signal. And you know it today as where the company Exelon and BG&E are located, that little promontory out into the harbor um, that uh, became habitable again after a $100 million cleanup project. Chromium is great for paint and tanning, uh, but terribly toxic and needed to be cleaned up. Um, so Jesse and uh, his wife Edith are high society, um, but he's not only a braggart. And let me read some of the charities that he was involved with in Edith. He was head of the Children's Aid Society, the Moral and Educational Improvement Society for the the Advancement of Colored People, the Manual Labor School for Indigent Boys, and the Maryland Industrial School for Girls. And Edith, young Edith, um, became involved with the League of Women Voters, Union Memorial Hospital, and she was an animal lover and was heavily involved in the Baltimore County Humane Society. Not surprising though, uh, Jesse dies before she does. She remarries uh, an army officer, a North Carolina army officer stationed at Fort McHenry uh, named Bruce Cotton. And they live at Silburn uh, uh, happily for 30 plus years. Remember, she's really young when she first marries. Um, uh, and then uh, she dies and Bruce sells to the city. He moves to Mount Vernon in Baltimore and sells the property to the city. And it becomes a wildflower preserve and garden center in the 1950s. And in the 1980s then turns into what we know today as Silburn Arboretum, um, run at city owned property run by the Silburn Association, doing the same mission of uh, promoting uh, uh, education of flowers and gardens and plants um, and preserving the natural space that's there. I'll leave you with one more uh, thought. Uh, if you want to uh, learn about the Tysons and see some great places, absolutely go to Sober Arboretum. Go down and walk around um, the Exelon site downtown and think about uh, the Tysons and their legacy. But also go park in what, if you know where Princeton Sports is today on Falls Road, go park in their parking lot. Actually, I'm not sure I can say that. Let's say go park somewhere very near their parking lot and walk up a road called Copper Hill Road, should be called Chromium Hill, but Copper Hill Road. And then there's some trails that branch off from there. I learned about it on a field trip with my kid's school, the Greenmount School. And in about a 10 minute walk from Princeton Sports, uh, you can be in a serpentine barren and you can feel like you're on the other side of the earth and it's fantastic. With that, I'll say have a good weekend and we'll see you soon.